What's up YouTube family? What we're gonna be getting done today is the oil change, but the main reason for the video, I wanna talk about this UPR replacement drain plug and this Z01 add-ons premium mag, pad, mag pad here. Uh, this is just a lifting pad and it saves you from really boogering up your uh, frame rails here on any vehicle. It's got two high strength magnets in there so it'll stick and stay on and then you just jack it up underneath the bottom of it here. This right here is going to replace the factory plastic oil drain plug that you have to keep replacing. This one can stay in there and anytime you have to drain the oil you pop this plug out here you can put a hose on the end of it and just unscrew the blue part here i don't think i can do it with one hand yeah i can unscrew the blue part here and it'll actually open up these holes in the bottom and allow the oil to drain out with the plug staying in place so you don't have to keep replacing the plug it's a very nice piece double o-ring piece goes in just like the factory one there's a set of o-rings in the bottom portion here as well very nice piece from UPR products. It's a bit of an investment at first, but well worth it. Other thing you'll need, uh, took some research for me to finally figure it out because there's three different sizes floating around out there, but this is the 3.0 liter and the 2022, probably the same for the 2020 on up to 2022, 3.0 liter uh, EcoBoost V6 that's in the Ford Explorer ST and whatever else it's in, but it's a 27 millimeter socket and that's what fits it the best get a long socket here so you can clear everything and i'm switching out to pins oil uh platinum full synthetic oil i've always had good luck with this everybody's got their own preference oil use whatever you want as long as it's the correct weight and it meets the uh, specifications that ford uh, introduced for the oil this exceeds any specifications that for this weight of oil. So I may later on go to like a 5W40 or 0W40. The zero is just for like winter weight. It doesn't really get that cold around here. So I'm kind of going back and forth about that. But anyway, right now, 500 mile oil change on this first oil change, 5W30. So there's a few different videos of, you know, oil change how to's. So we'll just kind of walk through it kind of quick and get to showing the drain plug and stuff that the video is about. So this is gonna be your dipstick. Your oil fill is gonna be right here. And the filter is right there in that housing. So I actually forgot that it had a cartridge filter even though I bought one two weeks ago for this very oil change. But I had to run this morning and get in the zone, auto zone and buy that socket. So let's go ahead and get this thing jacked up so we can start. So your jacking points, according to Ford, will be right here. You see how this magnets and holds on, and then you have a good jacking point. You don't mess up your frame rails. In the rear, it's the same kind of location. It's the clear cutout spot here for your frame rail, and that's the jacking point for the, for the rear. Okay, so I got my plastic pry tool here. Get it in the shot. And a uh, drill. Get it in the shot. Seven millimeter on the drill here. And what we're gonna do is take all these little plastic push pins out that secure this fancy pants cloth underpinning it's actually pretty nice there's one in the middle here it's plastic one back here you can just getting up underneath the lip i'm sure if you're watching this you probably already know how to take these plastic rivets out they're not too bad this vehicle's kind of new, but they can be the bane of your existence if they're all dirty and messy and you wind up breaking them. And these are strange looking. They're, they're plastic rivets, but they're square. So I have to figure out and learn with you. Okay. Just like a normal 
normal rivet, but they kind of stay in. They don't, they don't come all the way out like the normal plastic rivet does. Matter of fact, I think I remember seeing something about these. So then your seven millimeter, make sure my drill's going in the correct direction. Two, it's on the side here. I'm gonna leave that one in the center back there, kind of on there where it doesn't fall in my face. And I'll get it last. Ooh. Okay. Well, that's a pretty nice cover, a felt cover. This Ford's trying to step up their game on what they can. So this right here is gonna be your plastic drain plug. Looks like Ford was nice enough to have it to where it just aims directly at some transmission cooler lines here. So those will get all nice and full of oil for us uh, when we drain this. But once we put the UPR unit in, we won't have to worry about that kind of stuff anymore. You can put a small piece of hose on the end of that. And yeah, I'm sure that you know, it's gonna take a little longer to drain the oil than having a half inch hole in the side of the pan. Uh, but I mean, the convenience and not having to replace it every time makes it worth it. So let's get in on how exactly to, all right, so let's talk on how exactly to get this out. You see there's a little lip here. And these clips, there's one on either side, gets called as lips. And you have to get something to pull this up <clears throat> to be able to turn it past. And it's very difficult to do with one hand, but you just have to pull it just enough. Down, I probably need a metal pick tool pull that just enough down to be able to get this to turn. And once it turns out, I mean, it's just a hole there. And you see these lines right here is what I'm talking about. It's probably gonna get full of oil for me up here. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this bad boy out of here. So as I said, I'm gonna try to get this to where you can see it the best you can, but my hand's probably gonna be blocking it. Got me a pair of pliers here. You can probably do this by hand if you was under it. And then I got a pick tool. I go up underneath the edge and just kind of wiggle the pick tool until I get it past the latch. So now it's past the latch. Let's make sure my drain pan and everything is right because it's just enough. Come storming out of there. This is the worst idea by Ford, Jesus. Yeah. I hate this. Make sure the drain pan is in the... Let's go get all of the blankets. Oh, it didn't get oil all over the lines. Okay, all right, I hear you, Ford. It does come up out of there quick. Well, that wasn't too bad. Drain it out like water. About 480 miles on this oil, so run at 500 miles. I always change my first one kind of soon. Uh, so real quick, talking about things that everybody's got their own little thing about, this is one of my things. The drain plug's still out down there. I always take a little bit of the new oil and pour it in about a quarter of a quart, wasteful, I know, 
And in my mind, this gets any little pieces of anything, any trash, particulates, that's in the bottom of the pan, as well as all the old oil that's in the bottom of the pan and kind of pushes it on out the drain plug, giving it a little bit more, you know, push behind it. So I do that on every oil change with every vehicle that I've ever had. So I know it's excessive, but everybody's got their things. That's one of my things. I feel like it's a good idea. Figured I'd share it with you guys. So while that's draining, we're gonna go ahead and attack this oil filter. And I've put some blue rags around the bottom of it uh, it's pretty clean right now this is again 27 millimeter socket it wasn't that tight at all I think it's like 20 inch pounds or something what it's supposed to be but it's not very tight I mean it's double o-ring sealed so no need to wrench down on this thing you just want it snug got these towels hopefully no oil just comes running out of this thing we'll let the drain plug out so hopefully anything drains down to the pan goes on into my pan at the bottom all right this is loose enough i feel like i can do it by hand Not horrible, not horrible. I was afraid it was gonna make a huge mess. It really happened. All right. There's a filter though. That's yet to be determined if that's gonna make a huge mess when it comes out. Sit this housing down somewhere. Seems like a good spot. All right, filter just pulls out. Gotta get any oil off the bottom of it. All right, that's well, not too bad. Didn't make a huge mess. This is what I'm working with here. Let's take it over to the bench. So let's talk about some key differences here. This right here is gonna be the factory unit, and this right here is the UPR unit, okay? As you can see, there's a couple differences. The biggest of which is there's two O-rings on this UPR one. There's only one single O-ring on this one. The double O-ring is just the extra protection, okay? You wanna make sure this thing isn't leaking. They decide to put two O-rings on it just in case. They want this thing right here to be, you know, as solid as you can get it, all right? You also have the where you can turn this you can put a hose on it if you would like, onto the end, turn this, opens up the holes down here at the bottom, and your flow comes out of here. You don't have to remove the entire unit. And then when you're done, you just tighten that back up like that, remove your hose, tighten down your little set screw to make sure this doesn't vibrate loose, pop your plug back in, and you're ready to go. No need to remove and replace this every time. Uh, I know these things, they're not like wildly expensive or anything, but it's just a nuisance to have to replace it every time. Some people have getting away with reusing it over and over again. Some people have not and had leaks. Uh, I'm gonna keep this one around just in case anything happens. I mean, you put, with my life, you never know. Uh, but I'm gonna keep this one just in case. But let's go ahead and try to install this UPR one. First thing I'm gonna do is take a little bit of the oil and lube up these O-rings with a little bit of the oil. So we'll just pop open one of our quarts here. You don't have to go, go nuts with it. I'm just trying to get it, get it lubed up. And then I'll want to personally take a look at this filter. I don't really see a whole lot of stuff in between the pleats. There's a little bit of metallic in there. I don't know if you can see it shining, but it's the first 500 miles. That's the reason we're changing this. I want to go ahead and get this stuff out of there. 
Oh yeah, you can see a little bit of metallic in there. All these parts, the parts of the engine, the valve train parts, the oil pump parts themselves, the turbochargers, everything's wearing together for the first 500 miles. They're getting used to each other. They're they're getting close and they're, they're machining their parts together to where they're gonna work and be for a long time. So in your first oil change, you're gonna have a little bit of metallic in every vehicle. Because even if it's not a break-in period for that vehicle, the engine parts are still breaking in. I mean, it's, it's metal parts rubbing against each other. There's break-in. So let's go ahead and get this UPR in and we'll new motocraft filter. I don't know why the new motocraft filter doesn't look like the old motocraft filter. No rubber on the ends. This is the one for the car. So it comes with new O-rings. I'm gonna place the O-ring here, both the O-rings here. We'll go ahead and get that done. So we got all the new O-rings on, on the bottom and up here. Put a little bit of oil on both of those O-rings. And then slide it down in there. Get it down as far as I can with my hand here, which isn't very far. Then get my 27 millimeter socket. So that's all the way down. Like I said, it doesn't take much. It wasn't very tight. So get to where I can get a good gout on it here. All right, that's about as tight as what it was. So now we can move on to going down below to the UPR drain valve. So we're back under the car. It's been draining for a while. During that whole time, we was doing all that other stuff. I'll go ahead and put in the UPR unit and turn it until it locks. You don't hear the big click like you would with the factory one because it's got the stronger metal tabs on it. But once it's all the way against the stop turned, then you're good to go, okay? So the little uh, set screw piece is actually pointing to the top position there and I'm gonna see if I can get it turned to the bottom. So that was simple enough. Any of you that's installing this, if the set screw that's right here now ends up on top, just kind of take it out and then turn it a little bit past and then put it back in and it'll move it 180 degrees to the other side so you can get to your set screw to loosen it to be able to change your oil here. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. I'm not gonna film that. Like I said, there's plenty of oil change videos, this video. So the book calls for six quarts with the filter. I never really trust the book, but I always start close. So let's do this five quart jug here. Can't hardly see what I'm doing. Okay, we're good. So I'll let that drain just a little while. I'm not gonna bore you with putting the other half quart to a quart in. I'll just check the dipstick. Everything's tightened up on the bottom. The cover panel's back on. Drain plugs installed from UPR. It's really a great piece. One thing I forgot to mention, the tip of that drain plug from UPR is a magnetic tip as well. So any medical particles that are in your oil pan are actually gonna get drawn to that. So every other oil change, I'd recommend you take the whole drain plug out and look for pieces of metal. And if you really run it hard, you can really take the whole drain plug out every time. And it'll be a lot easier to do so after you've already loosened it and drained all the oil. And then you can take the whole drain plug out and look at that magnet if that's something you're interested in doing. So real quick here, one thing that I see missing from a lot of people's videos is how to reset this oil life. And it's probably because they feel like it's kind of, you know, easy to do and self-explanatory, but for some people it's not. So what you're gonna do is from your main screen here, you turn your key on, don't start it up, hit this, why is this not in focus? Hit this menu button here, and the menu button will bring you to settings. You'll hit 
OK. OK for oil life. And it says hold to reset. Now you'll just hold the OK button. Oil life is now at 100%. It is easy, but if you don't know how to do it, it ain't so easy, is it? Thanks, guys, for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe. All that good stuff. Make sure the bell icon, all that same YouTube stuff you do for everybody else. I appreciate you guys. I'm just trying to share information and hopefully help some folks out. Thanks.